In this video, we will discover a simple workflow to create fake atmospheric fog effects. For this, we will combine the standard aerial perspective with our custom localized fog shaders, all by using very simple techniques that render extremely fast. So in this video here, we're going to be adding some nice fog effects to transfer a scene like this in here to something like this. So you can see the before and after. And we're going to be using some quite simple techniques in order to achieve that. So for this, we have to emulate some volumetric fog effects to achieve this kind of like cloudy appearance here in between those mountains. And instead of building some very complicated setup, we're just going to be using built-in tools and simple cheats to build something that looks quite nice and quite realistic, but doesn't really require any kind of complicated setup or any kind of plugins. So as usual, you can always find all of my scene files on my Patreon if you want to follow along together with a whole course on car rendering and lots of other additional goodies. So check that out if that's interesting for you. Other than that, let's just jump in and see how we can achieve a result like this in here. So this one right here would be our starting point. And while it does look nice with the elements that we set up in here, it kind of lacks the feeling of having some kind of atmosphere, some kind of volume, basically. Everything is very, very contrasty. We don't really have the feeling that the further away something gets from the camera, the more foggy it gets, basically. And that's an important effect, especially if you render landscapes. So in V-Ray, there's two ways to do that. And you can find those in the Environment and Effects tab. And there is the V-Ray Environment Fog. And that's basically some real volumetric fog, which can very easily get quite complicated to render. I also have our own tutorial dedicated about this. So we're not going to be discussing this one. But instead, we're going to be talking about a very simple cheat in V-Ray. And that is the V-Ray Aerial Perspective, which kind of emulates here the V-Ray Environment Fog, but doesn't really do it in a very complicated way. So for example, you don't really get some volumetric shadows, but oftentimes you don't really need that. In this video here, we're gonna be focusing about some very simple techniques to get something looking nice without having a very complicated setup. So let's just use this one in here. And now we just need to restart here our rendering and then we can see an immediate effect in here. So just by adding this simple effect, you can immediately see that it improves here our scene a lot because now we have an understanding of the scale of the scene. Because for example, this mountain here on the back, we can understand this much further away from the camera because it has all of this additional haze here built up on top of it compared to those more contrasty mountains here in the foreground, basically. What is important to know is that the area perspective here requires a V-Ray sun in the scene. And that's why I have this sunlight here positioned slightly off camera. You can see whenever I move this around, you can get very different effect also with your fog or your aerial perspective. So it's important to basically position a sunlight in your scene in order for this effect here to work. So now let's see what kind of settings we have in here. And with the visibility range, you can basically define how intense the fog is. So here, for example, with a much lower visibility range, our fog starts much earlier. And I think this, of course, is a little bit too strong. Let's choose something like 3000 maybe in the scene. And then with the atmospheric height in meters, we can then define how high we want our fog to go. So at the moment it goes 3000 meters high. In this scene, I think that's a little bit too big. So let's just make it here a little bit around the horizon area, maybe like 300 or like 150 so that we don't really have the fog going all the way to the top. But I just want to keep it here positioned around our ground level, basically. So with the in-scattered light intensity, we can basically have the appearance like our fog is even emitting some light. Or if we go with values below one, then basically it would be swallowing up light. In my case, I would just leave it at the default value of one in the scene. And with a filter color, we can then basically define the color of our fog. So let's choose here, for example, some slightly bluish cyan colors and maybe just much less saturation. So we have a little bit of bluish fog that's building up in here. Now we have two more options here, the effect environment rays. If I enable this, then basically the fog would also be reflected and also affect our global illumination. And in this scene, you don't really notice any kind of very big difference. 
but in certain scenes that can make a quite drastic effect. And for the effect background in here, let me just hide my background dome. So now we basically have this background color in here. You can see I can define whatever color I want in here. But at the moment, it looks like the fog is cutting off here completely and it just clips completely to the background color. So with this effect background setting here on, you can see that now the background here would also be affected. As I said, in my scene, it doesn't really make any difference because I don't really use this background color in here. So that's what I want to show you about the aerial perspective, a simple effect that basically adds no additional render time and can just make your landscapes and environment scene look much more correct in terms of scale and much more realistic. So that looks nice already, but I want to go the extra mile and add some additional fog effects here around our mountains, which look like they have this kind of like cloudy pattern. So we can see some kind of structure in the fog because at the moment everything looks very, very smooth. So let me just unhide this layer in here. So now you can see we have a much nicer result because we have this kind of like cloudiness here around our mountains and we have some parts which are completely covered by fog and some other parts which are peeking through. And we have this kind of like cloudy texture that shows up in here. So this effect is actually quite simple too. And we're just gonna break it down in some very simple steps. So first of all, let me show you and unhide a object which I prepared in here. And at the moment it doesn't look like much, but we will work on that. So let's isolate here this object first. You can see it's super simple. It's just a bunch of different planes basically stuck in front of each other. And they basically degrade in scaling towards the front and the back in here. So now that we have this very simple object in place, we need to assign some UVs because we later on want to apply some textures to this object. So first of all, let's use a UVW map and let's use the map channel of one and let's use the planar mapping in here. Let's choose the X alignments. We're basically applying UVs that go from the back to the front. And let's add another UVW map in here. And then this one will be map channel two. And for this, we're taking this face mapping mode in here. So that basically every face here has its own unique UVs. And I said, this one will be our map channel two. So now we can exit this isolate mode in here and let's see what we have at the moment. I also applied already a material so that just basically this very simple V-Ray light material that just has some kind of color values in here. And that would be now our starting point for this. I also enabled those two options in here so that emit light on backside just makes sure that basically both sides of each plane are emitting light in both directions. And then also we will use this multiply color by opacity option here because now we're going to be layering some opacity maps in here to generate our fog effects. So first of all, let's add a composite here in the opacity slot. And once I do this, the object here disappears because first of all, we need to put some kind of base layer here. And for this, let's just add a simple gradient ramp in here. And now if I show the map in the viewport, you can see how this looks like. So at the moment we have this gradient going from back to front, but I want that basically the center plane has the highest opacity and then the ones at the back and the front have the lowest opacity. So let's increase this one in the center here to white and then this one here at the front to black. So you can see we have like dark, bright, dark, and this basically layers up the opacity through those planes in here. We can then define the amount of blending here with this output curve. So if I do like this, then basically those planes in the front and center only have very little opacity. And if I do it like this, then basically the ones in the front and the center have almost the same amount of opacity. In this case, let's just leave it at the default value in here. Let's go up one level back in our composite and then let's add the next layer here on top. So at the moment it doesn't look like much, but now let's add some noise here at the top. So for this, let's just use a simple standard 3ds Max noise in here. Let's bump up the size to 100 
and I will leave here the source to be the object XYZ and not use the explicit map channel so that basically each plane here has a slightly different noise. And since this one is a 3D noise, they basically also add up to a volume in here. So now we can boost up here the lows to 0.5 and let's choose, for example, something like fractal in here. And let's increase the amount of levels to the highest value, which is 10 in this case. So now you can see it's starting to look like something. We can even animate here the noise with this face parameter. But you can see there's some obvious issues and that is the borders of those planes in here. So we have the issues that the floor basically here just creates this very sharp lines. And then also here around those planes, we don't really have them integrating at all now into the environment basically. And that's what we're gonna change now. So first of all, let's use here a different blending mode. So at the moment, we only use this layer two because the blending mode is set to normal. In our case, let's just switch this one here to multiply. So it's combining those two different maps in here. And then we have the effect that basically the planes towards the front, they become a little bit more transparent and we have kind of more of a volumetric feeling basically. Now we still have the issue with these edges here of each plane. And that's what we're going to be working on now. So for this, let's add a new layer on top. And inside here, let's add a V-Ray dirt map. So I want to use the V-Ray dirt to define the interaction between my planes and the environment. And basically, I just want that whenever the planes here get near to the floor, the mountains, the trees, and so on, they will start to fade off in those areas so that we don't really have these harsh lines here appearing. So for this, I will switch the mode to the inner occlusion. And now let's increase the radius to something like 1000 is seen in here. And you can see that now we slowly start to get this effect that basically the planes become more transparent once they are near those kind of objects in my scene in here. The moment the effect is just way too subtle. So I'm gonna go in and use a color map curve in here and let's use here an adjusted curve, something like this. You can see now it's basically already getting better. I just need to basically completely get rid of those line here. And for this, let's lower the RGB offset here in this case to negative 0.2. And now you can see we don't really have this effect anymore where we have these kind of like sharp lines towards those objects. And that basically is also true to anything here in my scene. So you can see we have this kind of like smooth blending that's happening here whenever there's some kind of object which is close to those planes in here. So now if we go up one level to our composite, we can now easily also switch this mode here to multiply to combine it with those previous layers which we set up in here. And now I think we're starting to get some nice effect already. We're basically the clouds here towards the floor are now quite integrated already. And we just have the issue here around the edges of our planes where there are no objects nearby basically so the occlusion doesn't really kick in. And for this we can use a simple fourth layer in here to mask out those parts as well. So for this let's add here another gradient ramp. And this one I want to use the map channel 2. So that would be the one of our last UVW map where we're basically just masking out each face let's switch this one here and then to radial. We just need to flip those two colors in here. So basically we want that our edges are black and the center is basically opaque. And now we can get some good result in here that we basically masking out in a circular way each of the plane here separately. So now if we go in and switch the mode here in our composite, also to multiply. Now we also took care about those remaining edges which we had here for our planes. And now it's starting to look quite nice already and integrating really well into our environment. So of course this here is a fake effect because we just use some very simple techniques. And there are certain situations where this doesn't really work anymore. For example, if those planes 
they start to be rotated in a way that they are not really facing the camera anymore. You will start to lose this effect here, of course, because it's not a real volumetric effect. And this effect basically works best whenever those planes here are oriented mostly towards the camera. But there's some easy way how we can ensure that. And for this, let's just align here the planes to the camera. I just align also the orientation. And let's move this here back a little bit like this, for example. And now you can go in and go to the animation constraint, and then we will make a look at constraint and constrain this here to the camera. And then in the look at constraint, we can define to keep the initial offset. And now if I move this around, you can see it always rotates here towards the camera. And like this way, we can make sure that we have an effect which always looks the most ideal or optimal possible. We can now go in and just basically make a bunch of duplicates in here. For example, add some cloud in here and add a little bit more in those parts here or towards the front. And like this, you can very easily add direct your scene and can get quite fast result because all of this here just uses simple opacity rendering and basically can generate almost real time feedback in here. So now we only have one tiny issue to fix and that is, as you can see here in those areas, for example, we have these kind of like not nice lines and that's happening because we have two of those fog objects here very close to each other. They basically even intersect each other as you can see in here. And since we use some occlusion here in our composite, this is starting to have some unwanted results because basically the occlusion was only intended to mask out here our environment, but not the fog itself. And for this is an easy fix. We can just go in and choose this affected by option here and then use our fog planes and exclude them. And once I press OK, you can notice that now this part here looks correct. We don't really have these kind of unwanted planes or unwanted lines which are showing up in those areas in here. So there you have it. I hope with this tutorial I was able to show you that oftentimes it's not really necessary to build some very complex setup. But if you know what you're doing, you can achieve some quite complex looking result using some very simple techniques. So if you watch this video until here, chances are that you're also gonna enjoy the content that I provide over on my Patreon, where you can have access to all of my scene files from all of my tutorials, and also watch a whole course on car rendering and lots of other additional goodies. So see you over there. Otherwise, subscribe to this channel. See you in the next tutorial. Take care and see you soon.